don't know why I did that when I got shorts on. <laughs> what did you do? I just pulled up my. You do that when men do that when they when they sit down they like yank up their trousers so they avoid getting like bulging knees. But I just did it out of habit. That must be really irritating. I got my I got my sexy legs out. Got my Irish legs out today. I've got my sexy fun thing going on. Could my legs look any more Irish? Than that? No. They really couldn't, could they? No. They look like Brian McFadden's legs. Is that a bit too casual? I'll crop out the Brian McFadden. Maybe leg. you should crop out the crotch area. Yeah, I'll crop out the crotch <laughs> area because it's a bit crotchy, isn't it? Yeah. I feel like. Yeah, let me fix this shot a little bit, guys. Can we kind of sit like more like that, Hannah Mags? If we must. Yeah, and then I've got to get my focus again. That's better. Mommy, look. Wow, that's beautiful. Mommy, I'm making another one. Ta da! Whoa! I'm gonna put this down. It's going everywhere! These type of videos are like the stopgap videos before we can produce something like that French road trip video, which is the type of content that we both love making. Um, I think it's more what we were used to doing when we lived in London as well, like you were saying earlier. Mm. We only had one kid. We didn't have school to kind of tie us down. Mm. We had lots of stuff to explore, so it was kind of different then. Yeah, then. it was. You're totally right. And I think the London vlogs were more like outwardly facing, and now they're more introspective, I suppose, which is a different style. But I think like... The, the, the road trip video was exactly the type of stuff that we love making. We just obviously can't do that every week. So yeah, here comes Steph's uh, justifying of whatever <laughs> a crisis it is this week that you're yeah. having over the vlog. I've got a really itchy nose, but I feel like everyone's going to think I'm like taking cocaine or something. I keep itching, like doing that like, thing. Just itch it normally. Sit. Good boy. A lot of people have been asking us about what's going on with our podcast. Uh, we are about to sign a contract with a network who are going to kind of help us to, uh, I suppose, produce them. Uh, what Hannah and I need more than anything is deadlines and somebody to say, you have to do yeah. this. Because if it's just up to us to do it each week, we probably would just get a bit uh, slapdash and a bit lazy. Yeah, or it would just get put off. Or yeah. we'd be like, oh, we can't be bothered this week. But if we have somebody being like, you have to do it. God, my nose is so itchy. It's, I promise you I haven't had any drugs. <laughs> I've just got a really itchy nose. Do you feel worried that... We're going to have to sit down and do this and then also try and think of loads more extra chat for a, for a podcast. Man, we could just, we could, you and I could talk about anything forever. Yeah, I know. I just don't know if it would be like appropriate chat for a group of people. You know? I think the... You know, I could just get worried about podcasts. I'm really excited to do it, but podcasts are very much like you're once exposed. you get lost in a topic, you're way more exposed, especially the style that we want to do it in, where it's not like heavily edited or it's kind of all left in there with with blanks and everything. Mm. I guess I feel more worried about people just being mean. Well, There's a you, lot of people being mean on the internet right now, and I'm just so I done think, with it. I hate what comes along, what you're told that comes along with this job where they're like, oh, mean comments come along with it. And I'm like, no, why should they? Just don't be a dick on the internet. <laughs> like, how hard is that? Um, you know, when you think about typing something that's a bit dickish, just step yeah, away from the I, keyboard. I, I don't know. I just think um, those people are a byproduct of other things that have happened. Yeah. So, yeah, we've got to do Let's not go into that. Yeah, let's not go into that. <laughs> that's, that's a whole other conversation. Hey, we can do a podcast on that. <laughs> but I think if we did do a podcast about that, we could talk about that yeah. for half an hour, 40 minutes, where well, we could really go. do it here. We've so got this an is interesting like, subject there. Yeah. That can be episode two. This is a condensed version, I guess, of, of what that's going to be. And this is also, like, more textured. Here we have more of everything. So we have more vlog footage. We have, like, feature pieces. We have montages. We have all the stuff that we have been doing over the years merged into this kind of hybrid version of, of, uh, of a video. I haven't seen it done before, so I'm interested to try it because I'm like, I'm not emulating anybody. I'm kind of just we're carving our own little unique space here. Got my lunch date or brunch date with his weird hairline. Weird hairline. <laughs> We're on our last day of our month off drinking. Yay. Tomorrow we're allowed to drink again. I feel like we should have had a really good non-alcoholic drink of the week to mm, recommend. Yeah, we because there's have. probably loads of people watching that don't drink or yeah. don't like are just teetotal. 
Sorry, guys, we failed on that. <laughs> what have you been drinking lots of? I guess in the evenings when we, if we don't, um, if it's like an evening where we'd normally have a wine, we've just been having peppermint tea and that's the drink of the week, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Just... I love a peppermint tea. Yeah, Waitrose we... do a really good one. There you go, drink of the week. <laughs> uh, it's a three mint infused peppermint tea. It is pretty damn sensational. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very strange to be a non-drinker in a social environment because people straight away are a bit like, what, what the hell are you doing? Huh? I need to pee. Um, does he not have a um, potty yeah, down Yeah, but he doesn't know where it is right now. Where did you put it? It's in the kitchen. He's going to ask for it. Okay. Bye. Are you angry happy? I'm happy. I'll see you later. I'm off to somewhere called Fen End. It's a couple of hours drive out of Bath, which is where Land Rover have one of their kind of um, experience centres. Uh, because they've got this um, press event for the new Defender they've just launched, the new Land Rover Defender. That amazing looking uh, modern interpretation of the classic uh, old Defender you all know and love. Just started reading this, just lots of short stories. But they're really good. So far I've read four and I always find it quite hard to get into short stories. But yeah, these are really good ones. Just be careful walking around the tracks, slips, trips and falls. It's going to be quite slick. Right, we're going to go through some woods now. I'm going to take you off road through some woods and see what it can do. I'm trying to fix all my ISO, ISO settings while trying to <laughs> drive through ruts. It's so tricky sometimes to capture an experience. Bloody hell. Oh god, I'm not very good at driving. <laughs> it's so difficult sometimes trying to capture the experience and um, experience the experience. Why are you beeping at me? What, what have I done? Being out here in the great outdoors, driving through all this mud, surrounded by all this nature, what can I say, it's good for the soul. Saying that, I highly doubt it would do anything for my ex-girlfriend Lucy's soul, because <laughs> she doesn't have one. Oh god, this is so pretty. I want to jump out and film this, but I need to drive. I'm, in, uh, this, I'm so conflicted right now. Oh yeah, baby. Don't oversteer, Steph, don't oversteer, Steph, don't oversteer, Steph, don't oversteer. Trust the car, trust the car, trust the car. I really want this car. I wonder what they would do if I just drove off in it. You know, I'd say thinking about it, a Land Rover Defender is the polar opposite of my ex Lucy. Because a Land Rover Defender doesn't have a bloated sense of self importance and split ends. <laughs> a Land Rover Defender won't laugh at their partner when they suggest role play for the first time where he's the woman and she's an angry scaffolder who needs to get paid somehow. Land Rover Defender won't walk away from an argument when deep down it knows it's wrong, making me follow it up three escalators to the top of Kingston Bethnal Center before crying tears of shame, screaming, okay, you fucking win, I'm sorry, are you happy now? You're right, Lucy, I did win. <laughs> and most importantly, a Land Rover Defender doesn't need to block me on Instagram. Pathetic. Oh, and by the way, where's your black square? Where's that gone? <laughs> I'm so glad I'm over you. <laughs> finished that was such a fun day that was so much fun I told you you can't ever try and do anything that involves work mm. or anything productive when the kids are in the house because yeah. you literally get like 10 minutes yeah I know it, yeah it's tricky isn't it right anyway so how do you feel after not drinking for the whole month like I run a drink <laughs> I love that we've ended up in the garden centre because we're child free. How rock and roll we are these days. I know. <laughs> like we have one morning together in like five months without the kids and this is what we end up doing. Generally speaking, I'm really glad we did it and I feel like the sleep, the just feeling fit, feeling like clear headed. Dip me over and pour me out. The older you get, the longer your hangovers last. My hangovers now are two day long hangovers. Sometimes they can stretch to three if it's been a heavy oh. evening. So that's a, th and that's two three or three days. days. Yeah, yeah, if it's been a really heavy one. That's a, that's, that's a two or three days of being un, un, like to unproductive, 
feeling ill, not able to really do anything, unmotivated. I can't deal with it anymore. So it's good to take a break from it because you realise how great you feel when you don't drink all the time. Yeah, it's funny though because I think, um, I, I may be wrong, but like generally speaking in, in England, there's quite a big drinking culture. That's oh, huge, yeah. And I think particularly coming from living in London, the drinking culture there is huge. Like that's, it's, it's woven into like socialising. Mm. So if you go into a social situation and you're not drinking, people find it really strange. Yeah. I mean, obviously there's other things you can do with people mm. that yeah. don't involve going for a drink, but generally that's like... You do feel a bit like the boring one out as well. You're like, oh, I'm the boring sober yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Because everyone wants to be around other drunk people because the more drunk you get and the more you let loose... You don't want other people judge sober people judging you who are so, who are sober because you're obviously loosened up loads and you're saying loads of stuff you would probably never normally say, and then you've got somebody there remembering it all and taking mental notes. You're like, no, go away, sober person. <laughs> I, need this, I don't feel like I need that to be though free. as a sober person. Oh, good, I do. Like at a party, being mm. sober, I'm like, I feel like I'm better company than yeah, I am you? if I'm mm. drunk because if I'm drunk, like quite often I I can't react quick enough mm. or do you know what I mean like I just feel more together and like I can have a better conversation with yeah. people anyway what's your drink of choice going to be when we start drinking again tomorrow um, margarita oh that's a strong drink of choice to go mm. back to I was thinking French wine that we brought back from our trip let's do the nice French wine back from our trip yeah, yeah just a nice glass of red in the evening when the kids are in bed my, my, my challenge now is going to be two months of drinking one month off two months of drinking one month off I'm going to see if I can do that that's more going to be my new thing I did try another challenge recently uh, <laughs> I tried to do over 4,000 kettlebell swings a month. So here's what I'm doing. I'm starting off every day, first thing before breakfast, before my cup of tea, with 150 kettlebell swings. So that's every minute, on the minute, I do 10 swings, 15 minutes. I'm gonna do it for a month and see how I get on, see what kind of difference it makes. So my goal is 4,500 swings, split over 30 days. So 150 swings a day, every day. You may be wondering why I'm bothering with this shit. It's a good question. I don't fucking know, it seemed like a good idea at the time. I didn't do too well. I got about a week into it and then I just, I didn't do it one day and so I was gonna catch up the next day but I forgot to catch up and then I had three days to catch up and now I've just kind of given it up. I got a week in, I did a week. In your defense, because you're doing it at home, and the weather has been awful. And when Steph and I work out from home, we do it on the decking in our garden. And it's just not very nice doing it when it's pouring of rain or if it's really windy. Yeah, so yeah. when it's not nice weather, we just don't work out. Because otherwise we're just doing it in the kitchen. It's, yeah. It's the same, yeah. And, you're, and then you're like doing kettlebell swings in a dirty kitchen in the evening. And you're yeah. like, why am I doing this in the evening? Steph's just working out on the decking outside. And Rue's joining in. So cute. You're doing some dips, Rue. Oh my god, I love his version. He's good, isn't it? You're very good at that. Good boy. <laughs> You're going to have menu? such strong muscles. Can I see them? Whoa. Are you ready for squats? Yeah. Okay. You've got to squat down like this. One. That's it. Oh. Two. Two. Three. Uh, we were thinking about actually converting one of our rooms into a gym. So what we're planning to do is convert this room here, which is like next to our living room, into a gym because we never use that room. It's just, just sits there, never used. The kids don't use it, Hannah and I don't use it. It's just like a redundant room. The plan is to put like a kind of a rubber floor down, mirror that wall and get like a bike in there and some weights and stuff like that, some kettlebells and some um, med balls and stuff and just convert it to a, like a, a proper gym. The only concern I have about that is that Hannah's probably gonna get really like aggravated when I'm kind of like making my kind of grunty noises in the gym and using the bike and stuff like that. I can imagine in the winter when she's trying to watch TV or a film or something and there's me like huffing and puffing next to her, she's probably gonna get really irritated. That's what marriage is all about, just being constantly irritated by the other person. We did a two night camping trip at, at my good friend Tim's campsite. He has two campsites around here. They're like boutique camping. It's like it's like it's camping, glamping. but it's glamping, but, but extreme camping. But then it's still like you still cook. And still off grid. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the best thing about it. Isn't yeah, it? it's off grid. Farm camp is run by my good friend Tim, and it's a sort of like eco-friendly camping experience but 
without all the brutal parts of camping. So it's like luxury camping, glamping they call it. Tim's family are farmers and a lot of farmers over the recent years have had to diversify quite a lot because, well, the farming landscape has changed quite a lot. So they've ventured into this new kind of um, wellness retreat, um, allowing people to switch off, to go off grid. Which is something that we need to do every now and again because we're so plugged into the network that we need to unplug. Unplug to replug. God, I sound like a dick. We just arrived at our farm camp location for our camping night. Although, I would say this is like camping with style. This is how you want to do it. Check this out. So this is the lounge area there's even a rocking horse for the kids and a sofa this is our bedroom for the night how cute is that and then the door leads out out through here onto the decking and then you've got this whole area out here a little pizza oven fire pit somewhere to eat later on tonight and look at that you're just in the woods and then in here is the kiddies' room. So you've got their little beds and they've even got a little fire in there. Anyway, Tim has two campsites. This is their uh, new one that they've just taken over and are running now. And uh, we've just come for a couple of nights to check it out and uh, explore some of the woodland. Switching off for Hannah and I normally takes about a day. We start off with shakes and violent mood swings before we uh, learn how not to look at our phones and, and check Instagram and, and, and get outraged on Twitter. But eventually when you, you do get over the, the hump, it's like all your anxieties just fall away.
What's the matter, Rufus? He can't get through the stairs. Can you ask Grayson to help you? It's easier if you just um, go and do it, Steph, trust me. Trust me, it's easier if you just do it. Sorry, guys, this is so difficult to do anything with children in the house. It's like next to impossible. I told you he wouldn't help him. Oh, man. Honestly, it's like. I know, worse, tell me about it? it. Yeah, that's lovely. <laughs> and then, should we do the dad with dog again? Yeah. Come on, then. Dorothy, move away. Georgie is in the way, isn't he? Move away. <laughs> he likes putting his foot in the air. They're arguing about going upstairs because I think Grayson's beating, about him, going down the stairs, beating him upstairs. He's going up the stairs faster than he is, so it causes drama. This is why it's so difficult sometimes to like to do this with or kids. Get any content? Yeah, to get content with kids because it's just constant, constant dramas and screaming, and it's like it's. Just... Well, no, it's not. If you if we're in if the room, yeah. If we're navigating, the second it, yeah. you go and try and do something else, it's um. Yeah, well, it's just they're little kids, aren't they? Yeah, so that's yeah. why. But um, so give that's us... why I can't, haven't just haven't nurtured my channel at all over the summer holidays because I'm like, there's just no point trying. Yeah, but I have them. <laughs> Please, <laughs> just one. <laughs> Come on, I want your pancakes. Go have a dog. Rufus wants some reading eggs. I don't have reading we, eggs. We don't have right now, Rufus, but we'll get it for you in a sec. You want to come up here? Yeah. Oh, okay. I think you're a bit tired today, aren't you? Right, today I'm going to somewhere called The Wave in Bristol. Um, and I'm going there because I'm still on this like crusade to learn how to surf. Uh, but the problem is, when you have to rely on the elements for any kind of um, extreme sport like snowboarding, kite surfing, surfing, the elements never play ball. But the good thing about this wave in Bristol is that they artificially create the elements. So it's an artificial wave. All the surfing's been cancelled today, I'm afraid. Why is that? 60 mile an hour gusts. <laughs> I love it. The elements hate me, man. So it's cancelled because the winds are too high. There's too much wind. I can't believe that. I have such bad luck with this sort of shit, man. That's so frustrating. You may have noticed our new LED light there from the amazing Bag and Bones company, kindly sent to us by those guys. Uh, it's amazing. Look, it actually has a remote control, and I Ooh, can. Oh, uh, it's got a remote control. Yeah, look, uh, I can change. We change the colours. It's good that you can change the colours. That means yeah. you'll never go off it. Exactly. Yeah, it's great. Because you can always mix it in with your surroundings. Yeah. It's I'm nice. so obsessed with LED lights. I want to end up filling up this whole room with LED lights. That's it, George. You bark loads now. Oh, my God. This happened to me the other morning. I literally had half an hour free, and I was like, great, I'll do a makeup video for Instagram, like, quickly bash it out. And then the dog wouldn't stop freaking barking, and then the doorbell goes, yeah. and then the kids come home, <laughs> and I'm like, you know what, I'll just give up. <laughs> We've been on such a big walk. How long do you think that was? Uh, my watch is recording it so far, it's about 5k. Oh, actually, it's not that long, is it? No. Feels long because it's really warm. I wasn't expecting it to be this warm. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice way to get moving. I was just saying to Steph how I actually prefer that like just doing a nice big walk to my workout so we might try and um incorporate that into a date night sometime just going for a walk it's a nice way to see the city it's a good way to get moving a quick update on the old hair transplant it's uh, starting to fall out now which is a good sign all this bit here my whole face after i had it done did wasn't it gross my whole face just like swelled up funnily it's, enough you didn't film anything that week i took some photos i'll show you some photos of it it was horrible the, the, the thing is the photos were not taken at the worst point no no like you looked like a different person it was so weird uh, you know i put up a um here's a fun fact i put up a picture of me and um, when my face was all messed up and my hair was shaved off i said look, I, said, I just said i look like a northerner and i lost about 300 pe uh, followers on instagram <laughs> i'm not following him anymore mastered <laughs> saying it looks like me and there goes a few more yeah 
the most embarrassing part of this whole process is the fact that right now it looks like I've tried to touch up my hairline with Hannah's mascara. Like if you look at that from a distance, it looks like I've tried to touch it up using your mascara, yeah. doesn't it? Like, like, oh God, he hasn't, he hasn't like. No, I he hasn't think it's that it's really like fake. we've got some weird, like, chavy haircut. You think so? Yeah. Nah, I reckon it looks like I've tried to touch it up with a bit of mascara all around there. People still so use that word. Is that offensive hat. now? <laughs> what? Chavi? Probably, yeah. yeah. You shouldn't say that. Um, sorry, any chavs watching. <laughs> green ninja. Red ninja. How can you oh. be the green ninja? Okay, I'm the green ninja. Green ninja. Green ninja. Green ninja. Yeah. Yeah, smacky smash. Wait, we're ninja. Yeah, we friends? Yeah, high five. Yeah. Recommendations? Any recommendations, Hannah Max? Uh, I do, but I don't have it with me. What is it? My epilator. <laughs> Who's got time to go, like, get them waxed all the time and, mm. or shaving all the time? It's just horrible. So if you're a very hairy person, then I recommend it massively. My recommendation is a book I've just finished devouring. It's, it's so good. I couldn't put it's it down. It's the first book you've read all year, isn't it? No, I've always read. I've got about four books on the go at the moment. I just read them bit by bit. I commit to like a bit, but this one I, I don't. This one I just dedicated all my time to. So normally I have a few books I'm reading like flitter between. This one I was just like absolutely obsessed with. What's it called? Shuggy Bran, Bran, Shuggy Bran. I think it's Bran. Shuggy Bran, B A I N. Shuggy Bran, Bran. Oh my God! Stop it's a Scottish. Na- it's a Scottish name. I can't say their bloody name. Scottish Bran, I think. Bran, Brain. By Douglas Stewart. Anyway, it's a book by Douglas Stewart. It's a coming of age story set in Glasgow in the early 80s, and it's a very, very dark read. Extremely dark. Probably one of the darkest books I've ever read, but very gripping and harrowing. Uh, oh, highly recommend it. Not a, really a holiday read, like you wouldn't want to take yeah. that out to a beach trip to Fanaraki or something. You. This is very like. Heavy going. Heavy going. It's a, it's a winter book when it's bleak outside. But, when it's bleak outside and you want to feel bleak inside yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but anyway, I've linked it down below if you want to check that out and have a read of it, but be warned, it's very dark. You're in trouble this week for chewing up my West Elm rug. Yeah, he chewed up our West Elm rug. And you barked at the park as well. Not very happy with you today. And the other day he rolled in the biggest pile of poo oh. I've ever seen. I had to shower him and the garden hose down outside and give him a big scrub in the bath. It, like, he was caked in it. But then look how cute he is. He's so, he's so lucky he looks that cute. If he wasn't that cute, you'd be in big trouble, wouldn't you, Georgie? Right, anyway, we've got to go now because I've got to wrap this up. I've got to get this all finished because on Saturday we've got um, a, a two year old's third birthday. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I know, it's sad, isn't it? So, uh, we've got to get uh, Ruth's little birthday, so I need to get this video finished before then. So, I'm going to have to try and. So, if anything was a bit crap in this week's video, then apologies. I, I had to bang it out very quickly. Um, but, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for getting to the end of this oh, week's video. I can't believe it's going to be three. I know, it's sad, isn't it? I no, I wish we could just freeze him at three. Shut your rat. Yeah, me too. They're so cute when they're this age. It's probably yeah. my favourite age of his so far. You reckon? Minus the last couple of days with the uh, mood swings. Yeah, wings. yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you all next week. Uh, we'll film some of Rufus's birthday so you can watch him turn three with us next week if you want. Um, uh, yeah, and thanks for sticking with us and still being here for the ride. Uh, we really appreciate you all. And we'll see you all next week for more shenanigans. Take care. Goodbye. Au revoir.